Welcome to The Link. This is a program all about linking you with the resources in your community. I'm Joni Sutter. Today we introduce you to our new neighbors and friends, members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who are Mormons. They believe that the Church's scripturally-based teachings change lives by motivating people to become more like Jesus the Savior. Mormons have developed a strong sense of communiality that stems from their doctrine and history, and they dedicate large amounts of time and resources to serving in their church. Joining us to teach us more about their faith is President William Elwell, the eighth stake president of the Hartford Stake, whose job is to oversee the Mormon congregations in Central and Northern Connecticut. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us what a stake is? Sure, a stake is a a, I guess a, a group of congregations. In, in the Hartford Stake, we have nine congregations, you know, spread throughout the area: Goshen, uh, Glastonbury, Manchester, Canton, uh, up to Ellington. So we've got th that. That encompasses those congregations. A lot of people ref kind of, tr I guess, refer to it almost like a Catholic diocese. Okay, so yeah. So it's that group of churches. It's a group of churches, mm -hmm. and you're. New in Farmington with this most beautiful temple, oh, which you. we're going to hear more about. But mm -hmm. I thought that today we could focus on the Mormon faith. And could you give us a little history of the faith? Sure. So we believe that when Jesus Christ was on the earth, that he, he organized a church. I think that's pretty established in Christianity. And that through the time when the apostles you know, were killed and martyred, that, that the church was taken away from the earth and it was eventually restored. And that restoration, a lot of people have heard about it, came through a prophet, a young boy named Joseph Smith, when he was 14 years old in upstate New York um, in, in the 1820s, where he received a vision from God. He was praying. He was trying to figure out, like many of us are, you know, what's the right religion? What, you know, after all these faiths that are out there and all the different teachings, what's the truth? And so he was reading the scriptures one day, James 1, 5. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given you. So he says, Well, okay, I'll ask God. And he went to a grove of trees at, 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 behind his house to pray. And he received a vision. And in that vision, he, he describes it. He said, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, above the brightness of the sun. And he said that in that light he saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description. And he said, at, during that vision, one of them pointed to the other and said, this is my beloved son, hear him. And so he, Joseph Smith, saw God in Jesus Christ. And through that experience and some later ones, he saw angels. He was asked to restore the church, restore the priesthood of the church of Jesus Christ and onto the earth. And so that's why the church is often referred to, well, it is the name of the church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so we view ourselves as a restoration of that initial church um, in the latter days. So um, it's based on, you know, f since, since that time, there's been a prophet on the earth who we believe communes with God. And that's one of, the, I think, the major tenets of our re religion is the opportunity to receive revelation, continuing word of God. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really important to our people to understand that God's still with us and he still guides his church on the earth. This church has had tremendous growth mm -hmm. not recently but over a period of time Correct. not not i'm not saying not recently but over a period of time you've grown to 15 over 15 million members mm -hmm. i'll read some of these statistics 188 published languages over 30,000 congregations 74,000 missionaries with 418 missions there's 151 temples and we'll talk about the temples a little bit later four universities and colleges over 400,000 seminary students enrolled, and 4, 000, over 4,000 family history centers. What is a family history center? That's a good question. So family history is very important to our church because we believe that, like many people, that our ancestors you know, play a large part in our lives, mm -hmm. and even more so that we are tied together for eternity as families. And so we want to know more about our families. And it, actually, when we talk more about the temples, there's um, covenants and promises we make and opportunities we give family members that have passed away that haven't been able to do certain ordinances on the earth. They have the opportunity to do so through us, right. you know, in the temple. Right. And one of those is the baptism. Correct. Um, so would that be for someone who wasn't baptized that may be in your family? That's correct, yes. And so. you would want to 
know that that person would be um, having everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And so the baptism can take place through a living member. That's correct. So Jesus okay. taught in the New Testament, it's a you know, scripturally based doctrine that you know, baptism is the way into heaven through mm -hmm. him and through okay. baptism. And we, we believe that's an actual physical ordinance that needs to be performed here on the earth. And that, you know, the interpretation of that's changed somewhat because people can't accept the doctrine that, well, you know, if you weren't one of the few people that were actually baptized, then somehow you're not entitled to go to heaven, which you know, doesn't comport with the kind of God that most of us believe God is, a loving God mm -hmm. who, you know, we are his children and he loves us. So uh, that, that's the opportunity we have is to bless our ancestors through that opportunity where um, it's not con conscription, I guess you'd say, you know, it's, it's done sometimes by our youth, sometimes by ourselves. We go in and be baptized. So the actual physical ordinance of someone's, you know, baptizes you, puts you Submerged. in a font, mm -hmm. you know, immerses you in the water and says, you know, a little blessing and and brings you out of the water and um, you know then they have the opportunity to accept it or not in, in you know in the eternities right so Mormons are Christians correct mm -hmm. and what do Mormons believe about God well, that's a good question and you know just about the Christians I mean the name of the church kind of says it all right yes. we're the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints we we believe in God we believe that God is our, our father of our spirits that he's our Heavenly Father I guess you'd say and that we're all brothers and sisters as his uh, you know children we believe that he loves us, he has a plan for us here on earth, and he sent us down here to, you know, have certain experiences. Some are, you know, tough, some are wonderful, but throughout it all we learn and grow, and then we return to him after this life, to heaven, um, and, you know, enjoy that kind of eternities with our, with our Heavenly Father. So you enjoy a real relationship with Jesus every day? Correct. We do. We, we make that mm -hmm. important. We try to pray every day. We try mm -hmm. to do things that will keep us closer to him. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm saying, what I'm sensing too about it is that it's a real relationship. It's not, um, uh, uh, how do I want to say, it's a ritualistic type of relationship. It's a real relationship. It's a daily walk with God. It is. And I think, you know, we, we talk a lot about serving others and, you know, Christ taught that if you love me, you'll serve others, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it comes from, is, is you learn to love people around you. Your life becomes more about that, about serving others, about blessing others, you know, paying things forward. There's so many ways you describe it in society, but it really is just looking out for others and not being so, I guess, focused on ourselves and selfish and prideful mm -hmm. that we're able to help others. Which is all part of the, the good old ego that just kind of gets in there all the time. Do you yeah. believe in the Trinity? We do. We believe... We talked about God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. We believe in the Trinity. We worship them as mm -hmm. our, you know, as deity. Um, but uh, some people believe that they're one and the same. We believe they're three separate personages. Mm -hmm. And some of that comes from the scriptures, and some of it comes from the, you know, the experience Joseph Smith had, where he saw two distinct beings, and you know, the baptism of Jesus, where there were distinct beings mm -hmm. exhibited there with the dove, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, right. Jesus Christ being baptized and, and God speaking. But but we certainly believe in the Trinity. Can we talk about the 13 Articles of Faith? I, we're not going to have time to talk about all of the 13 Articles, but they're, they kind of um, spell out you know, the, the larger picture. But number 11 specifically. Sure. So the, the, the Articles of Faith, they were written a long time ago in response to some of the questions that many people have, which is, you know, what do Mormons believe? And I think, as you mentioned, that we don't have time to go through them all, but they're a really good recitation of the major kind of tenets of the, of the religion. So there, it's a wonderful thing if you want to know what Mormons really believe and think about. There's 13 Articles of Faith that kind of go through some of the steps about we believe in God, the Eternal Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. That's the first one. Number 11 is interesting, and we were talking about it before because it, so just to, to quote it, it's, uh, we claim the privilege of worshiping Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience, and we allow all men the same privilege. Let them worship how, where, or what they may. And what's, you know, happened over time, and think, thinking back to that Joseph Smith story, you imagine the times where, you know, so much conflict over religion, right? Just even here in our country, you can go back millions, you know, hundreds of years and think about the wars that have been fought over religion. But here in our country, where we claim a freedom of religion, you know, that's part of the American ideals, it, it's, it's important for us to make sure that we are, you know, both, you know, worshiping as we choose, but also allowing other people the same, you know, freedom, the same opportunity. 
uh, and having real dialogues about you know what we can believe together, kind of what are our common beliefs, instead of tearing each other down. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And here in the area, and, and you know throughout the United States, of course, too, and, and throughout the world, we try very hard to work with other religions that are in our area. We have wonderful interfaith councils here in the area, and we you know, really, really appreciate the, the good work that the Catholics do, the Jewish Federation does, and so many others, the Episcopalians, and all that we work with and try to do joint things with as we, you know, help, work to help the poor, work to help in you know, town cleanups together, not as, you know, kind of forcing people out, but bringing people in and trying to be inclusive. So. That's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Now, what does the Mormon faith believe is a purposeful life for someone? What would a purposeful life look like for a Mormon? Well, that's a good question. Part of it we've talked about, right? Serving others. It's yes. um, obviously, you know, we, we're part of, you know, you're doing everything you've got to do in life. Your education, you'd be well educated mm -hmm. um, because we believe that no matter what, you, what your passion is, what you decide to do, you should, you know, try to, try to learn as much as you can about those kind of things. And we believe family is very important. Our, our faith has always been very focused on the family. And so, you know, having a family, raising good children to the Lord and, you know, helping them to be faithful as well is very important to us. And a very big job. A very big job. I've very got four children of my own. I've got four girls and they range from 21 now to uh, five. So she just entered kindergarten. I mean, those, those that's serious work. Serious work. And it's a long time. The long it time. Doesn't yeah. end, yeah. You know? It doesn't end. It doesn't end. end. And you have to be a, a good example and you have to have um, support along the way, I think, as Absolutely. parents. You We're have to have to support. Trying to make sure they don't make the same mistakes we did. Yes. Right? So. Do Mormons believe in the Bible? Absolutely, yeah, we do. The Bible, you know, is the Word of God. You've got the Old Testament, the New Testament, the talk of, of our relationship with God, and especially the testimony of Jesus Christ. And a lot of people think we don't, and that's because of our emphasis on the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. And the Book of Mormon, just to, to take a step back, was uh, revealed to Joseph Smith you know, when you think about the Bible, it talks about God's dealing with His people in Jerusalem, in the ancient world, the old world, right? You have the Old Testament, and then the New Testament where Christ comes, and we learn about the renewal of or Christ's mission and, you know, His atonement and sacrifice for us. And at the same time, in that same general time period, a group of people came over to the Americas. They were led by God to the American continent. And you see the same progression there that where they had prophets that, that spoke with God that tried to teach the people. People were sometimes good, sometimes bad. And, you know, they had their lives and their wars. And that's the history that the Book of Mormon talks about. So it's very complementary to the Bible. We um, see, it, see them both as the Word of God. And they both testify of Jesus Christ. The Book of Mormon has a, a sub sub subtitle. It says, Another Testament of Jesus Christ. And so we believe both. And the Book of Mormon came from... Joseph Smith? It, it, it was revealed that Joseph Smith, um, he was given, he was shown by an angel some ancient plates, gold plates, mm -hmm. that were um, written on by these prophets throughout the years and kind of, I guess, uh, compiled by one of the prophets into this record. And he was given the power of God to translate those records. And so, you know, amazing. And, you know, like, like many religions, supernatural. they're supernatural, right? You, you rely on, eventually, in most of our religions, a God mm -hmm. that's supernatural, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, who is, you know, um, a, a God that was sent down to earth to, you know, become mortal, at least in that sense, and angel, angelic visitors. It, it's, it's amazing. It's um, supernatural. And, you know, some of my friends call it crazy, but then they laugh and say, well, a lot of my beliefs are crazy, too, because they believe in, you know, some of the same things, just in different contexts. So. Mm -hmm. And the angel was Angel Moroni? Angel, angel Moroni. Moroni. Mm -hmm. And that's the angel that's on top of the structures. That's exactly right. The temple structures. So, on top of almost every temple that we build, uh, you usually see him with a horn, you know, uh -huh. and that's uh, uh, symbolic of the angel in the book of Revelations in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It says he will go up forth and proclaim the everlasting gospel. And we believe that's a literal representation of what uh, was prophesied in Revelations, is, so, is the angel Moroni proclaiming that gospel. Pro proclaiming, and, and it's, it's beautiful testament there certainly, um, on, on top of the temple. If I were interested in a service, I wouldn't go to the temple? No, it's, it's interesting. A lot of my friends think the same thing. So the temple is, is reserved for some very sacred ceremonies and ordinances. We talked about the baptisms, mm -hmm. but also um, sealings, uh, which is really a marriage. When we, have, when we get married, we believe that we're married not till death do you part, but if you're married in the temple under the proper authority, you would be uh, married for time and for all eternity. So that's a very special ordinance, and one of the reasons we keep the temple so sacred. 
Um, and that's, that's performed in the temple. But those are done on days other than Sunday. On Sunday, we worship in uh, meeting houses around the area. And those are the nine um, that you oversee? Those are the nine that I referenced. And, you know, obviously, if, as you get further out from, from our stake, there's another stake in New London. There's a stake in, um, in New Haven and stake in, uh, in uh, southern Massachusetts. So all around, I mean, there's, there's Mormon churches everywhere. And on Sundays, you know, the times vary. Usually starting at 9 o'clock, there's a service and sometimes a second service around 11 or 1 in a lot of areas. Sometimes those, those vary, but um, on the website, mormon.org, you can go there and find a church that's local to you. Type in your, your address, your website, I'm sorry, your, your zip code, and it'll, it'll give you a couple options to go where you can go and come and see. Right. So if I was a visitor, would mm -hmm. I have to participate, or could I sit in the back and watch? No, you can kind of participate as much as you'd like, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. they, um, the, 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 the worship services, there's three distinct parts to it. Well, the first is a sacrament meeting, which is very similar to what many of us know as taking the, the sacrament, the mm -hmm. communion, those kind of things. And we, we meet together as families. They're in there. There's um, you know, a few prayers and hymns. And uh, they take the sacrament. So you would be welcome to participate or not as you feel comfortable in that. Just and, Sunday school? Yeah, and then after that there's Sunday school. And then the third hour is, is another type of Sunday school, but they split into you know, female and male, okay. like both at the youth level and the, and the adult level to, to talk about things that are more, I guess, specific to the, you know, the different genders. Speaking of genders, what is the woman's role in the church? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It's, 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 you know, they don't hold the priesthood um, authority of, let's say, a stake president or a bishop, which is kind of the priest of the ward, but they have an uh, organization called the Relief Society. Mm -hmm. And the Relief Society, is, it's, it's a huge organization throughout the world, and it's dedicated, as it, as it sounds, like to the relief of those who are suffering. And it's an amaz amazing organization. Mm -hmm. the, the leaders of the, there's a president of the Relief Society, and she has counselors, and, you know, a lot of... Um, both at the stake level, uh, my level, and then at the individual congregation levels, and those they direct the the work of all the women in the church in the church throughout the church, and you know a lot of their work is humanitarian or focused on helping the women with their families and so much to do there. But they sit on our leadership councils; they're very involved in everything that we do. There are some misconceptions about the Mormon faith. Uh, what would some of the bigger ones be that you would want to talk about? Well, one of them I think that's, you know, people like often think of, and I remember I was on a mission, I was a missionary to our church when I was 19 in Spain, and that, that came up even there, is polygamy, plural marriage, you know, having more than one wife. And the church did, did practice that in its early days. If you know the history of the church, it was, you know, started in upstate New York with Joseph Smith, but it, you know, the, the saints grew the church through Ohio and then Illinois and Missouri, and then eventually moved, uh, migrated to the Salt Lake City Valley, right? And while they were there, there was some uh, plural marriage practiced, uh, they believed, from God, you know, rev by revelation to help the saints at that time, similar to, you know, some of the ancient patriarchs in the, in the Old Testament who had multiple wives like mm -hmm. David and Solomon, mm -hmm. ordained by God until they went wicked. But um, mm -hmm. that, that practice, you know, it, it stopped 125 years ago. There was an official pronouncement of the church not to stop doing it. And ever since then, the, the Mormon church has not practiced polygamy, but it's still really associated with it. I had people back on my mission, and even now every once in a while I joke about, oh, how many wives do you have? I thought uh, that. Yeah, so I have one beautiful wife. She's very kind to me. She's uh, very, very patient with me. But Embarrassingly, yeah. Yeah. I thought that. I okay. thought, well, they, they still practice. Yeah. Um, polygamy, but no, no, for a it's, long, long time. No, it's been, it's like I said, it's been a, over, you know, over a hundred years, and a lot of that is because there are still people in the United States that practice it. Some of which, yeah, I guess, okay. could be termed as, you know, splinter groups from the Mormon Church. Okay. That when the Mormon Church decided to stop that practice, um, they didn't believe that was right, or they didn't want to follow that for whatever reasons, and they continue it. And some of that is glorified on, you know, we, uh, the HBO show, you know, um, I'm sorry, Big Love and Sister mm -hmm. Wives. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, it is on the public consciousness right now because mm -hmm. there are people that are still living that way. And, you know, people have the, the choice to live how they want to live, right. which is we just want to make that distinction. It's not Absolutely. sanctioned by the church and um, not, not part of the Mormon doctrine. Very focused on health and, and well-being. And so no drinking, no smoking. Where, what is the basis of that? It's a very good question. And a lot of people notice that because it's, it's very, uh, I guess, front and center for a lot of people. I, I, you know, I'm a, an attorney by trade. I, I go to a lot of meetings and there's always alcohol there. And or coffee. Some, and coffee. We don't drink coffee. We don't smoke. No illegal drugs. And so that, that comes from not just the, the logic of, I guess, trying to live more healthy, but it comes from another revelation 
in the early areas of the church where um, they realized it wasn't a good thing to do and God gave them a, a code of health called the Word of Wisdom. And it has a lot of things in there about trying to eat meat sparingly and try, you know, moderation in a lot of things. But the main tenets of it, you know, no, that people remember, no alcohol and no smoking and, and no coffee? tea and coffee. And that's tough for them. Is the <laughs> so, tea and coffee because it's a stimulant? We believe so. I and mean, there's mm -hmm. really no explanation. I don't want to try to make one up to try to, mm -hmm. you know, but the, the logic of it would seem yes because of the, you know, the, the I guess the stimulant, the nature mm -hmm. of the other drugs that are prohibited right. in that. But it's, um, so it's a lot of people think it's the caffeine, but we, you know, a lot of people, a lot of other you don't Mormons miss it will drink. At all. Well, I've never had it, no, so I can't say it. I miss it. And, you know, I've been a lot of long, long, you know, trials that, <laughs> you know, everybody's pounding, you know, <laughs> 10 cups of coffee a day and they're looking like, how do you do this? And mm -hmm. I, hopefully it's just because, I mean, I assume it's just because, I would say there's blessings associated with too, but it's partly mm -hmm. that I've never started, so I never mm -hmm. have to stop. So. Well, it's wonderful that you're so involved in the community as an interfaith uh, part of the community, uh, working alongside the community leaders. I know that's been true here in Farmington um, with the new temple that's uh, in Farmington. So it's wonderful and we wish you all the best with the temple and what's going to be happening over there for the people uh, that are in the Mormon faith because I, I think there are there are very specialized times when folks can go there Right. that are, are Mormons. Yes. Yeah, so it's, you know, like you said, no, no Sunday services mm -hmm. um, there. And it's open at certain times for, for those who are ready to go and do the ordinances they want to do, mm -hmm. either for themselves at first or, or for their ancestors. It's a wonderful thing for us. Right now, we're driving two and a half hours to Boston. Yeah. You know, so when you add up two and a half hours there, two and a half hours back, it makes it difficult to do it on a regular basis. Yes, it and does. that's what we're asked to do is to worship on a regular basis there at the temple, yes. along with our typical Sunday service. So. Yes, and the grounds are beautiful and everyone can enjoy them. Uh, we do when we drive by and we, we notice how beautiful they are. I mean, it's, a, it's just a jewel right there in, in Farmington. And so it's wonderful to have you. And I'm so glad that you were able to come here and explain the faith. The websites that are gonna be provided at the end of the program um, are very informative for anybody who wants Thank more you. information. But to have you here and to be able to ask some of these questions has been just wonderful. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I really um, appreciate the opportunity. We hope that for anyone watching this that's interested that they come and, and see, as we said, come join us for a service. Come join us, come see the temple um, and enjoy the grounds there. We try to make it as beautiful as possible. But we'd, we'd love to get to know you better. And you know whether you join the church or not, we want to be part of your, um, to help, help people to, as, as we like to say, to make bad men good and good men better. We're always trying to just help other people mm -hmm. and help, you know, help them in any way we can as, as they would want to help us, I'm sure. So, wonderful, wonderful so organization. Oh my goodness. And for all of us at Numbing TV, I'm Joni Sutter. Until the next time.